Yo, what up? Welcome back to another episode that I'm making just for myself. Dear future Jason, please watch this really quick informative video if you ever smack your head so hard that you completely forget how to shoot 35 millimeter film. Hopefully in that case, you don't forget that this video exists. So you think you have the balls to start shooting 35 millimeter film? Well, before you embark on your quest, here's a quick breakdown on how to get started. Let's begin with the most obvious thing. You'll need a camera and a lens. For beginners, we really only need to worry about two types of cameras, point and shoots and SLRs. Point and shoots are little compact cameras that make all your dreams and photos come to life through the power of automated computer technology. All you have to do is load the film and the rest is taken care of. Try to enjoy these times when computers are our slaves and not vice versa. SLR cameras are a little bit more complicated. SLR stands for shitty lasagna recipe. Wait, no. It stands for single lens reflex. Popular 35mm SLR cameras for beginners are the Pentax K1000, the Olympus OM-1, the Minolta X700, and the love of my life, the Canon AE-1. If you're on the hunt for a camera, your parents or your grandparents might have one lying around that you can use, you know, after they mark up the price and sell it to you. Alternatively, you can peruse eBay. I'd recommend looking for a listing that has been tested and confirmed working. Once you get that camera, make sure to look up what type of battery it takes and pop that bad boy in. No, not into your mouth, into the battery compartment of the camera. Most SLR cameras come with a standard 50mm lens, which is a great lens to start with because supposedly 50mm is nearly equivalent to the field of view our eyeballs have. That's just what I've heard though, I've reached out to the Mythbusters for confirmation. 50mm is what's called a focal length. The bigger the number, the more zoomed in the lens is. Conversely, the lower the number, the more wide the field of view is. Okay, you have your camera and your lens, but what about film? Let's see. A good film to start out with is my personal favorite, Portra 400, because it has good range and produces great results, especially with skin tones. Portra 400 isn't cheap though, so some less expensive alternatives are Kodak Color Plus and Fuji C200. If you're going through an artsy phase, Ilford HP5 is a very good black and white film. Okay, let's load our film. To pop the back, we'll want to lift this module, or something similar on your own camera, until the back hatch pops open. Take your film and insert the cartridge, and now push that top module down. This should hold the cartridge in place. Grab the lead of your film and pull it out to the other side of your camera and insert it into the gap of the spool. No need to be nervous, you're just loading film, not performing open heart surgery in the bathroom of a Las Vegas Quiznos. With your thumb on the film and the spool to keep it in place, you can advance to the next frame by pushing this dongle here. Haha, <laughs> dong. Get used to this. You'll need to do this after every shot you take, and every move you make. Hopefully your film is caught, and by advancing you pull out more film from the cartridge. You'll want to make sure that the sprocket holes on your film line up with the sprockets on the camera. Fire the shutter and advance one more time. Everything looks good, so let's close the back. Now, we need to get to frame 1. Advance your film until your camera's shot counter reads 1. If your film module over here isn't spinning when you advance, your film is not caught on the spool. At this point, you definitely should not open the back of the camera until we rewind the film. Oh boy, here it is. The moment you've been waiting for. Time to fire off some bangers. Well, hold up there, Skippy. Not so fast. Before we can snap off some fire picks for our Tinder or grinder profile, we'll need to measure how much light is in the scene. This is our vocab word of the day, light metering. A lot of 35mm cameras have light meters built into their viewfinder, but first you'll need to set something called ISO. ISO, or ASA, is how sensitive your film is to light. Portra 400 and Ilford HP5 are 400 ISO. Color Plus and Fuji C200 are both 200 ISO, which means they are less sensitive to light, like how I'm becoming less and less sensitive to emotions. Now, your camera is basically a child, and children are idiots, so it has no idea what ISO your film is. Thus, you will likely need to set it manually. With the Canon AE-1, all you need to do is lift the outer cap of the shutter speed dial and set it. Now, if you look through the viewfinder and half press the shutter button, you should get a reading. By gosh, we're on to something. Now it's time for a crash course on the most important part, exposure. So now we know what ISO is, but there's also the f-stop and the shutter speed. These three settings work in conjunction to bring the forces of evil to justice and exposure shot properly. For the sake of this video, you only need to worry about f-stop and shutter speed once your ISO is set. F-stop can be found on your lens. Typically, the numbers go from around 1.4 to 22. The higher the f-stop number, the wider the range of your depth of field, i.e. more stuff is in focus, but there's less light coming in. And we we like light. Shutter speed typically goes from 2 seconds down to a very fast 1 1,000th of a second. The faster your shutter speed, the less motion blur you get in your shot, but the less light your film will get. Again, we like light. For handheld shots, I recommend never going slower than 1 30th of a second. Now, every camera is different. I recommend reading the manual if you can find an online version of it. My AE-1 here is set up in a way where we select what shutter speed we want to use, and then it tells us what f-stop to use based on the ISO. This is called shutter priority for hopefully obvious reasons. The light meter in my viewfinder of my 
AE1 is telling me to shoot at F11 if I'm at 1 2 50th of a second. If I obey its commands and switch to these settings, I should get a properly exposed photograph. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. If that all seems too complicated or overwhelming, worry not. This process will get easier with practice. Or frankly, it'll keep getting harder and harder to the point you quit, change your name, and move to another state. Hell, I was halfway to Tijuana before I started this channel. So you've gone out into the world and fired off your roll of shots, and you've come back a new person, ready to lay your eyes on the masterpieces or dumpster babies you've created. Well, first you're going to need to rewind your film. Do not open your back before or during this process, otherwise all your film will burst into flames. Press the release button on the bottom of your camera, flip up the rewind crank, and start rewinding the direction your arrow tells you. You should feel a click and a change in tension when the film is rewound all the way. If you're unsure, keep rewinding for a bit. Now you can pop the back of your camera, and all you should see is a lone film cartridge. Pop that bad boy out and head down to your local lab. If you live in the middle of f***ing nowhere, you can send your film to one of these labs by mailer. Film labs will develop for you, and even scan upon request. As you grow and blossom into a beautiful 35mm photographer, you may start wanting to learn how to develop and scan on your own, as it's more cost effective. A week or so will pass before you get your scans back via email link or compact disc. But when you do finally receive them, hopefully they are as gorgeous as you imagined. And if they're not, and you hate them, then congratulations, you've passed your final tests and you can now call yourself a film photographer. If your shots have light leaks, then you might need to get a new light seal kit for your camera. If your shots are too dark or too bright, your light meter might be old and not functioning properly. Maybe try using a light meter app on your phone. Now, all that's left to do is repeat these steps with a different film until you find the one that you like, or until you have no money left in your bank account and are forced to make shitty YouTube videos about how to shoot film.